Good morning. morning. And happy Trinity Sunday. Today our service is different because at 10 o'clock we are celebrating our confirmands, uh, youth confirmands who were confirmed yesterday. Um, They have written a creed which we're going to say in lieu of the Nicene Creed today. And a former class wrote the Eucharistic prayer, so we're going to use that. So just go with it today and enjoy the offering of our young people. I should also mention next Sunday we begin our summer worship and we will be using a liturgy from the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Each Sunday, uh, each summer, I mean, we try a different liturgy from a part of the Anglican Communion or a different part of Christendom. And so uh, this summer we'll be worshiping like Lutherans in honor of our long-standing relationship of full communion with the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading, but pay close attention because it is audience participation.
God created dogs and cats, <clears throat> sheep and cattle, bears and giraffes. He created snakes and iguanas, spiders and dragonflies, mice and mosquitoes, and goggles of fleas. This is so good. So good. Then God said, let us make human beings and let them be in our own image. They will be in charge of the animals, fish and birds, to take care of all my creation. So God created people to be like himself, male and female, in God's own image. God blew breath into them and blessed them and said, be fruitful, bear and raise children so that you may take charge of my creation. I am giving you care of the fish, the birds, and the animals, all the living creatures on the land and in the sea. And now look around you. I have provided food for you and for all the creatures, fruit and grain and plants. It was so, and God was very pleased by what he saw. This is so good! So reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. From the beginning of 
time, at least since there have been people, people have wondered if there is a God and what kind of God that would be. Every, as far as we know, every civilization in human history has had some sort of religious tradition. They have looked for God in nature, thinking perhaps that each uh, part of nature had its own God. There were, you know, the thunder sort of became a God and mountains, and there was all this kind of speculation. There's something in us that, that yearns to know about God. One of the great innovations of the people of Israel was to clarify that thinking, to know that they had a relationship with one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only God, right? One God. Monotheism was, the, you know, there was an Egyptian pharaoh who kind of flirted with it, but, but really it's the gift of Judaism to the, at least the Western world to have this clarity about one God and a God who wanted to have a relationship with us. That beautiful story of creation, and thank you, Kathy, for powering through with your uh, almost fixed eyes to get through there, right? It's a beautiful story about the one God who creates everything and then blesses it, right? This relationship that God has with every part of creation is beautiful. God isn't in creation, right? God is, we don't worship the God of the mountain. We worship the God who made the mountain and who made the fish and the sea monsters. And I love the description in that version of the story. Except mosquitoes. I don't get mosquitoes. I know they're part of the food chain, but I wish they weren't. I just want to say that. But we evolved in our thinking about that, right? Once we received the gift of Jesus, Christians began to evolve in their understanding and to say, wait, it's, yes, we believe in one God, but God is revealed to us in different ways, right? We know that God, the creator, made everything. That, we got that clear from all of the Hebrew scriptures, and God wants a relationship with us, and God calls us to holiness. God gives us the covenant, the law, to guide us, but there's more, there's also God who comes to us in Jesus. And so the first inkling of a God that might become what we know as the Trinity is born. And then when Jesus is getting ready to ascend, he tells his disciples, don't worry, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm sending you the Holy Spirit who will be with you. Now, there is no official doctrine of the Trinity in the Bible. It only evolves by about the third century as theologians reflected on these scriptures, reflected on Christian tradition and practice and said, now we can nail it down. So our Nicene Creed and our Apostles' Creed are very clear that we understand God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Creator, the Son of God, the Incarnate Word, and the Holy Spirit. We get glimpses, though, in the Bible and our our uh, epistle from 2 Corinthians and our gospel are in there today because they point us to this idea of God who is one God but revealed in three persons. Paul uses that blessing as he is wrapping up his time with the Corinthians, his problem child church. He's been writing to them over and over, trying to get them on the right track, and he says, all right, let me sum it up for you. Just love each other. How about that? Just love each other, that will be enough. And then he says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus, the Son, the love of God, the Creator, the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That's the Trinity. That's Paul's version. And then in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus' final words to the disciples before he ascends are go into the world. Here's your marching orders. Again, keeping it simple. Here's the blessing, the last thing I'm going to tell you. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. To this day, every baptism uses those exact words. Every Christian baptism must be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit to fulfill that great commandment of Jesus at the end of Matthew's Gospel. I think, however, 
that as much as we believe in the Trinity, it's dangerous for us to think with our limited, puny human brains that we can possibly encompass the entire truth of God. And so I just encourage us to have humility. Uh, one of my professors in seminary said, whatever you think God is, God is more. Whatever you think God is, God is more. Yes, our received truth from the scriptures, from our Christian experience, from many centuries of great theologians is the Trinity. God is a unity of being in three persons, three ways of understanding and receiving and experiencing God. But that doesn't mean we should put God in a box, even a beautiful Trinitarian box, because God is more. God, who infused this whole creation with life, it's impossible to look at the pictures that come to us from NASA. I don't know if you've been watching those images from the e better and better telescopes. There's the Hubble and there's another one too, right? There's a new telescope. Anyway, those pictures, there, there was one picture in particular that showed what they call a nursery of the stars. This is a cloud of matter out of which stars are born. The atoms and material comes together to form stars. Imagine a star being born. Imagine the mind and the power that was able to imagine and create that. I stand in awe before that kind of majesty. It's impossible for me to understand that. I can't even understand how my car works. It's taken us an entire two weeks to figure out how our new live stream system works. Brian is back there testing it out here at 8 o'clock. Um, so so my, I just realize how limited my mind is. So it's not important for me to understand God or to think that I have all the answers about God. But one thing is crucial for me, and that is the understanding that at the heart of God, as we receive God through the scriptures and our tradition, at the heart of God, there is a relationship of love between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. An energy of perfect relationship and love. And that we were created, all of us, male and female, we were created in the image of that relationship of love. We were created in love and for love and to love. We are not meant to be isolated and alone. We crave relationship. Do you remember the pandemic when you were stuck, early in the pandemic, when you were stuck at home? I spent many hours in my basement doing my work all by myself. I had to come up though every once in a while and have tea with my daughter who was finishing her college course because I couldn't stand that much time. I'm an introvert, I love being alone. But even I reached my limit because in my DNA is a desire for relationship because that's how I'm made. That's how you're made. That's how we are made. And to me, for us to live into our identity as those who are made in the image of God, it's about working on relationships. It's really the secret to life, working on relationships. I bet right now there is a relationship in your life that is bothering you, <laughs> that is niggling at you. Could be with a neighbor, could be a child, could be a parent, could be a sibling, could be a coworker, could be a fellow parishioner, I don't know. We, our challenge and our great glory is to try to live into this relationship of love that God has manifested in us that God reveals to us and that God calls us into. I love the refrain of that Old Testament reading from Genesis, the creation story, because God desired so much. God could have been perfectly fine just as God. God creates the universe. God creates us because God desires 
that that relationship grow and take root in other forms. And so God has a relationship with all of creation. God looks at it and says, this is good. And then he looks at us, human beings, and he says, very good. When you look in the mirror, this is the last thing I want to say, because the last relationship is, is the one we have that's the most difficult, and that's the one with ourselves. When you look in the mirror, do you say to yourself, very good? Or do you think, there's some problems here. <laughs> there's some issues. I, I got, oh man, there's more gray hairs, and I put on some weight, and I'm not happy with this or that. What would it look like if we could look in a mirror and see ourselves the way God sees us? So very, very good. So beautiful. So beloved. So wonderful. And what if we could have that same experience when we look at each other and to see the glory of God that awesome power that creates stars out of the matter in space and that has created you and me. What if we could look at each other and see and say, so very, very good. When we come to the peace today, when you shake hands or hug uh, the person next to you, I want you just to think about what a precious incredible gift they are and what a precious incredible gift you are and know that each of you is made in the image of the same God a God who is at the heart a relationship of love Father, Son and Holy Spirit Standing, let us together recite the creed that was written by this year's confirmation class. We believe in God, the creator of everything, who is always with us, always guiding us to be better, and always loving us no matter what. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who with God helps us to be more just people and make the world a better place. He came to earth to help us learn more about God. He healed people to show us the power of God. He helps us resist the temptation to hurt God. And he loved us enough to die for us and to forgive all our sins. We believe that the Holy Spirit resides in all of us to guide us and give us strength, courage, faith, confidence, and wisdom, and connect us to God and Jesus. We believe the Holy Spirit helps us help others through lessons we learn and helps us help ourselves by keeping us calm and persevering through daily life. We believe that we are all part of the great community of Christians, that forgiveness is available to everyone and that there is life for us in heaven after we die. Amen. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth.
for all who serve God in his church. Stephanie and Dylan. And for first responders, for those committed to our prayers, especially Daniel, Renee, Margaret, Merv, Rose, and Robin, Sylvia, George, Catherine, and Gregory, John and Virginia, Elise, Rob and Sue, Wilma, Jim, David and Karen, Mary Jane, Sarah, Henry and Sheila, Jane, Dick, Bishop Kimo, George, and those we name now. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. Jim, Martha, Char, Selena, Zach, Quentin, Nolan, Matthew, Kara, Deb, Larry, Isaac, Toby, Eva, Evelyn, Paul, and Michelle. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. Pray for the victims of the train accident in India. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray for you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, in your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another. You're all looking particularly beautiful today. <laughs> Any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Yes? Birthday? Birthday, yes. All right. So Luann, we'll add Luann to our prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, in you we live and move and have our being. Your love gives us life and sustains all of our relationships. Look with favor, we pray, on these your servants as they remember and celebrate all the anniversaries of their lives, including their birth, baptism, marriage, ordination, and others, especially Carl, Lynn, and Luann. Sustain them with your bountiful spirit and grant them the grace to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart in this life and in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, Please be seated. This afternoon, the Rochester Conservatory is presenting a special teacher's recital at 3 p.m. I think it's 3. I don't think it's 2. I think it's 3 p.m. I better check that. Um, but uh, the Rochester Conservatory is one of the many community groups that uh, uses St. Philip's during the week. Um, if you're never here during the week. We have something going every day. We have 
uh, many 12-step groups. We have a group of women that paints in the basement. We have a flute guild. We have the conservatory doing concerts. We rent out the hall. This is a, this is a community church, and I'm very proud of that. The conservatory is pleased to be here, and they are offering this concert. All of the free will offerings are going to St. Philip's. And so it'd be nice if we had a few people here uh, to support them. It's a wonderful group. That's 3 p.m. today here. Our uh, women's lunch group is meeting uh, tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. at Panera Bread at Livernois. All are welcome. The men's group is meeting Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Please do let Rich know if you're coming so he can plan the food. His phone number is in the bulletin, but it's been a lot of fun. I hope you can join us for that. And then the ECW is having a gathering uh, and election next a week from Tuesday, a salad supper and election of officers, all women of the church. Whether you like it or not, you're members of the ECW and invited to come to that. And then on June 18th, we'll be honoring our graduates. We have a couple of high school graduates this year. Any other announcements? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Create in me a clean heart of God and renew a right spirit. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. We thank you, God, for giving us hope to carry through good and bad times. We also thank you for letting us worship and feel your presence and love through creative arts, for giving us energy to stay positive and do your will. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who gives us peace when we are tested and for people who share our journey and stick with us no matter where our journey takes us. And lastly, thank you so much for the vast beauty of nature and the special relationship we can develop with animals. And so we join with saints and angels in proclaiming your glory as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We especially thank you for Jesus. He was an example of how we should live and shared stories to teach us how to be compassionate and love others. We are grateful to him for strengthening our faith through communion and prayer and giving us a new beginning every week. Thank you for giving us diversity in our congregation. Help us recognize and accept the gifts, ideas, and energies of our youth. Be with us as we work together to put your vision of us as a church into action. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of your Son. By means of this holy bread and cup, we show forth the sacrifice of his death and proclaim his resurrection until he comes again. Gather us by this holy communion into one body in your Son, Jesus Christ. Make us a living sacrifice of praise. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. 
Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Savior. Amen. I'd like to invite uh, Bishop Kimo and Jana to come forward. Bishop Kimo is starting a new ministry today at Samaritas. He's going to be offering uh, the Holy Eucharist once a month to start, and then to see how that goes. So I thought we ought to give a blessing as he begins this new ministry, as they begin this new ministry, with help. And for your whole team, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the many ways that you call us to serve. Thank you for gathering communities to worship you in word and sacrament. We pray for this new ministry at Samaritas, for those who are in special need of your grace and love, Lord. We pray that you'll work through Bishop Kimo and Jana and all of the team, Jean and others who are helping with this ministry, to draw together a group of people who will be able to hear and to receive the grace of God as poured out through your Son, Jesus Christ. In the name of God, and with the support of this congregation, I offer you the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. The Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard you, save you, and bring you to that heavenly city where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.